<coughs> thank you very much to Jake and the team from Midas. Thank you for inviting AOQ to come and present this case study webinar. The title of my presentation, Finite Element Analysis of a Rubble Masonry Multiple Arch Buttress Dam with reference to the Olifansport Dam Project in South Africa. The contents of my presentation, number one, an introduction, number two, the project background, number three, the site conditions, number four, the design criteria of the dam, number five, defining the problem statement and solution, number six, looking at the case study objectives, number seven, the development of the finite element model, number eight, the analysis assumptions, number nine, model walkthrough, number 10, the results, number 11, closing off. Chapter 1, I'll start with an introduction of myself and AOQ Consulting. My name is Ryan Castles. <coughs> I have a bachelor's degree in civil engineering obtained from the University of Pretoria in South Africa. I'm also a registered professional engineer with EXA, who are the Engineering Council of South Africa. I have more than seven years experience in the analysis and design of dams whilst working at AOQ Consulting. I also have three years site experience in heavy civils construction with my previous employer. I have been involved in the analysis and design work on 16 various dams during my uh, period at AROQ Consulting. Two notable dams that I've worked on um, undertaking finite element analysis work as part of dam safety evaluations on the left a photograph of the Pongolapuit Dam which is a wide valley concrete arch dam located in the province of KwaZulu-Natal in South Africa. The photograph on the right Lusiliapuit Dam which is a rubble masonry concrete arch dam located in Zimbabwe. The AOQ Consulting Engineers um, company profile AOQ Consulting are based in Pretoria, South Africa. We are an award-winning firm specializing in dams and geotechnical engineering. We were founded in 1993. We currently have 21 full-time staff. The dams department has worked on 150 dams projects, of those 43 being new dams in 33 different countries. AOQ Dams has worked on all uh, types of dams from roller compacted concrete to rubble masonry concrete dams, hard fill dams, concrete arch and concrete gravity dams, concrete face rock fill dams, earth fill dams, rock fill as well as composite dams. The image at the bottom of the slide showing the company organogram, myself Ryan Castles, I fulfill the role of structural dam engineer specializing in finite element analysis of dam structures. Chapter 2 of the presentation looking at the project background of the Olifansport Dam starting with the project location, the dam description as well as AOQ's project involvement. The Olifansport Dam is located in the Limpopo province of South Africa the dam is actually an off-channel storage dam which uh, forms part of the Olifants River raw water abstraction works which feeds the Pulakwana municipality. The dam is located downstream of the Arabi Dam which is a concrete gravity dam. A photo of the Arabi Dam shown on the top right of the slide. <coughs> the two images on the bottom of the slide showing the location of the dam overlaid on a um, photograph taken from uh, Google Maps. Looking at a brief description of the dam, the off-channel storage dam constitutes a ring structure comprising five walls enclosing a valley. The southern portion of the dam is the highest having a vertical height of 22 meters from the deepest foundation to the dam crest. As mentioned 
the Olifant's Boat Dam is a rubble masonry concrete, multiple arch buttress dam, commonly referred to as an RMC dam. The uh, dam has a crest length of 230 meters and is made up of five variable radius arches as well as six buttresses and gravity flanks on the upper banks of the dam. The photograph image in the lower left corner, an overlay of the dam ring structure with the five um, the enclosure walls indicated in red and the contours of the um, enclosed valley overlaid on a Google Maps image again. The image or drawing on the right hand side is just a screenshot taken from a CAD model of the dam configuration for the southern wall. AOQ's project involvement, the dam owner are the South African Department of Water and Sanitation represented by Lepele Water. AOQ were appointed as dam specialists to undertake analysis and design of the dam structure. The um, dam is currently at the tender design stage of the project life cycle. The image below, just a nice blown up um, figure of the contours of the dam site and the various enclosure walls as well as the um, reservoir body that will fill up the enclosed valley. Chapter 3 of my presentation the dam site conditions, how this affects the selection of the dam type, specific mention of the foundation geology and geotechnical conditions, as well as an explanation of the selection of the variable arch size configuration, and a brief overview of rubble masonry concrete technology. Various dam type options were considered for the Olifantspoort dam site. Um, these comprised of a a possible clay core embankment dam, a concrete face rockfill dam, a hardfill dam or an RMC arch buttress dam. On the four photographs on the slide showing typical configuration of, uh, of each of these various dam types. Um, the conditions to consider when um, selecting a dam site topography of the site valley contours, the valley contours for the Olifantspoort site relatively flat slope valley to be enclosed by the uh, ring structure walls. Other conditions are the material availability on site uh, with particular reference to Olifantspoort, a scarce supply of clay or impermeable material on site, um, therefore making it not suitable for clay or core embankment dams. There is, however, an abundant supply of rock material in the locality of the dam site. Um, two photographs shown in the slide on the left-hand side. Again, the site topography of the valley um, showing relatively flat contours. Uh, also, just an overview of the dam in relation to the other components of the abstraction works. The photograph on the right an aerial view taken from Google Earth um, showing the clear depiction of the igneous rock foundation uh, in the dark um, color of the, um, the ground surface. Further conditions to be considered for selection of dam, dam type, the geology and geotechnical conditions of the foundation the foundations show competent material suitable for a concrete masonry arch slash gravity dam. Other conditions to consider the flood hydrology conditions. Hydrology studies were, were carried out to determine spillway requirements and flood levels um, for specifying the crest height of the dam and also the cost of construction was considered. Um, more specifically the cost of the material as well as construction methods relative to local South African conditions. The um, map image on the left hand side of the screen showing the 
local geological conditions of the dam site, the green area indicating gabbro, norite and an author site, igneous rock, very competent, only um, moderately or lightly fractured. On the right hand side image, um, just a, a graph of the stage capacity curve for the dam basin. Taking a look at the local geological features for the dam site, um, geological profiling and geotechnical testing were performed on the site, um, revealing slightly weathered, moderately jointed, hard to very hard igneous rock, the rock having high stiffness and strength characteristics. Um, the site testing also revealed local faulting and lineations of a thickened, fractured rock for which consolidation grouting will be required. The image on the left uh, with the color spectrum showing the results of geophysical testing performed on site using P-wave velocity calculations um, to give the stiffness of the foundation. The image on the right an overlay again of contours as well as um, an indication of the local lineations of fractured rock running through the dam um, reservoir basin site. Considering the above, the selection um, of dam type was finalized and it was decided to use or to, to design an RMC arch buttress dam. Uh, the reasons for this being suitable competent rock foundation an abundant supply of rock, a relatively flat valley, um, no local supply of clay or impermeable material ruling out the possibility of an embankment dam, um, labor intensive RMC being suitable for job creation in local community and um, hydro hydrology studies indicating manageable flood conditions for typical crest height spillway capacity of the dam type the two photographs on the left showing labor intensive construction are of, of an RMC dam and the photograph on the right showing um, the Mdwaka dam um, which is a completed RMC buttress dam um, with the water level full to the crest. The arch buttress dam configuration comprises variable arch sizes, arches 1 to 5 configured to span across the fractured rock lineations. The foundation of the buttresses were uh, designed to be um, placed on the competent rock mass flanking the fractured rock lineations and the gravity sections designed to uh, be constructed on the upper banks. The arch loading uh, is transferred into the foundation through the buttresses making the buttresses the integral structural component. Uh, therefore, it was decided to found the buttresses on the more competent uh, rock mass foundation. The image on the left, again, a similar image, just a, a, a graphic of the CAD model of the dam. And on the right hand side, um, the dam overlaid over the um, an image of the, the local contours as well as the um, fractured rock lineations showing that the arches span across the fr fractured rock lineations. In terms of rubble masonry concrete technology, RMC is a composite material matrix of rock plum and mortar binder. The plum sizes range from 50 to 300 millimeters in diameter, generally um, being less than a third of the smallest dimension of the dam. The mortar binder normally constitutes one part cement and four parts sand. This will give an approximate compressive design strength of 14 MPa. The performance of the RMC material is highly reliant on the stone mortar composition and the associated interaction of the constituent parts. And uh, once again, this um, concrete technology is very labor and intensive labor intensive and economical in South African conditions. The sketch on the left um, 
showing the typical composition um, between mortar and rock plums on the right hand side two images showing um, a RMC arch dam under construction showing the uh, labor intensive activities taking place chapter 4 of the presentation the design criteria of the dam we will take a look at the RMC allowable stress the foundation material strength and the dam loading combinations how do we define the RMC material strength the RMC mortar binder has a compressive strength of 14 MPa the mortar is seen as the weakest component of the RMC matrix um, the coarse heterogeneous characteristics of the RMC limits the use of small-scale cube testing which is typically used for conventional concrete um, as a result of this a low allowable stress was adopted in relation to the actual strength and the compressive strength intensity was restricted uh, to within the linear elastic behavior um, zone the RMC allowable compressive stre strength being um, 4.9 MPa the RMC tensile strength being 1.4 MPa and a normal loading allowable tensile stress of 0.4 MPa in addition to this RMC generally experiences negligible drying shrinkage due to plum interlock table 1 at the bottom of the slide um, providing the design um, strength criteria for the typical loading conditions being normal, unusual and extreme loading taking a look at the foundation design parameters the foundation rock mass having hard to very hard gabbronite and norite igneous rock on top of that a 1.2 1 excuse me 1 to 2 meter hill wash overburden um, this material indicating high unconfined compressive strength shear strength density and stiffness um, and the competent foundation being suitable for any dam type but ideal for an RMC arch buttress dam in table 2 of the slide <coughs> Um, we show the various material characteristics the unconfined compressive strength being 75 MPa a friction angle of 49 degrees a cohesion strength of 90 kilopascals an elastic modulus of 65 gigapascals and a rock mass density of 2900 kilograms per meter cube all showing very competent rock foundations for the loading combinations used for the dam um, these were defined according to the USACE's engineering manual um, gravity dam design of 1995 usual loading um, defined as all permanent and extended period loads unusual loading normally abnormal temporary loads which are anticipated to occur during the lifespan of the structure and finally extreme loading uh, which are severe loads that the structure realistically expected to be exposed to during its lifetime in table 3 on the slide um, a list of the loading combinations um, assumed for the Olifansput dam loading combinations 1 to 5A, 5B and 6 um, Typical loadings um, comprise hydrostatics, gravity, uplift, temperature, uh, silt and seismic loading. Defining the problem statement and the solution for this webinar or this uh, study to ensure realistic modeling and analysis of an RMC multiple arch buttress dam on rock mass foundation solution the use of the finite element method 
to model and analyze the dam structure using MIDAS FEANX software. Chapter 6 The case study objectives are to demonstrate the FE modeling capability of MIDAS for performing 3D analyses of dams, to provide a high level overview of the steps followed to develop the FE model, and to present selected modeling inputs, assumptions, and analysis results. Development of the FE model, modeling of the dam and foundation geometry as solid bodies in AutoCAD, importing of the geometry into MIDAS, creating the FEA model in MIDAS, and um, performing standard quality checks of the completed model. Modeling of the dam geometry, the arch buttress configuration was modeled as a solid in AutoCAD. The various arches were modeled by lofting between cylindrical arc lines, extradus and intradus, which were created at elevation intervals. The cylindrical arches having single center and constant angle properties. The arches were designed with marginal thickening towards the base. The various arch sizes uh, were designed to span across unfavorable foundation material, as mentioned earlier in the presentation. Um, the range of arch aperture angle size from 100 to 120 degrees, and the arch radiuses ranging from 8 to 23 meters. The two images showing a CAD model of the dam configuration as well as an isometric view of the dam solid body um, taken from AutoCAD. Modeling of the foundation geometry. The foundation surface was first created by extruding the upstream and downstream excavation profile line towards the outer extents and creating a surface. The foundation solid was then formed by slicing the excavation surface from the block. The image below taken from AutoCAD, a screenshot showing the dam and foundation solid bodies. Looking at the completed model of the dam and foundation in AutoCAD, the foundation model size and outer extents uh, were defined as two times the dam height below the dam foundation and the radial extent from the top left and top right bank was taken as two times the height of the dam. Both of these um, requirements um, are defined in uh, the FERC publications. Importing of geometry into MIDAS, uh, the solid geometry was exported from AutoCAD as a SAT file and uh, subsequently imported into the MIDAS FEA NX software as a um, CAD geometry. Creating the finite element model in MIDAS, um, the first step is to use the AutoConnect tool to ensure compatibility of the various geometry bodies. Um, this tool um, lines up the various vertices, lines and faces of touching geometry bodies. After this, uh, the various materials parameters were defined and assigned to the properties. A suitable meshing strategy was then developed according to uh, expected strain gradients of the dam stress outputs. Um, this um, comprised of having a fine mesh in the area of interest, particularly the dam and immediate foundation, having a coarse mesh on the outer extents of the foundation, and incorporating a smooth mesh transition from the dam to the outer extents of the foundation. Um, the mesh size control um, tool was used um, to 
define the geometry mesh the two images showing the auto connect function on the left and on the right hand side an image taken from Midas of the dam foundation solid body with the various red dots showing the mesh size control constraints the geometry was then discretized using the Midas 3D solid auto measure with hybrid elements comprising hexahedral, tetrahedral pyramid and wedge elements the model was then constrained at the foundation outer faces the various loading functions were defined in Midas the loads were then applied to the mesh sets in the model the self weight was applied as a gravitational body force the hydrostatic and silt loads appri applied as pressure loads to the mesh surfaces three images shown on the left um, a view of the um, boundary constraints on the outer extents of the foundation the middle um, figure a typical pressure loading on a um, gravity dam section and on the right hand side a screenshot taken of the um, dam mesh body with pressure loading on the upstream face of the dam. The completed model of the dam foundation constitutes uh, 110,000 nodes, 192,000 elements and 330,000 degrees of freedom. The various mesh bodies having 100% compatibility between them the two images just showing the dam and foundation mesh and a close-up of the dam um, as a result of following an appropriate meshing strategy to develop a good mesh the um, mesh showing regular convex shaped elements with good aspect ratio elements having regular internal angles ranging between 60 and 120 degrees elements with a low taper ratio, elements having a good Jacobian ratio and avoiding constant strain elements specifically in the dam being the area of interest. For chapter 8 of the presentation analysis assumptions I will take a look at the material model of the dam and foundation, the various loading conditions of the dam as well as the analysis case defined uh, in terms of a staged construction approach. Material model assumptions the dam and foundation continuum were assumed to have linear elastic material parameters the uh, joint at the dam foundation interface was modeled using interface elements with a stiffness modulus representing a low tensile capacity of 600 kPa, that being in relation to uh, the allowable tensile stress for extreme loading. The four images in the slide showing the various mesh bodies of the dam continuum, the interface elements at the base of the dam and the interface elements and dam um, interaction. The um, line graph on the bottom right of the slide showing the traction displacement relationship of the interface element the dam and foundation linear elastic material parameters are shown in table 4 uh, the foundation unit weight of 0 foundation static uh, elastic modulus of 65 gigapascals the foundation Poisson value of 0 0.23 foundation thermal expansion coefficient of 8 micron per degree Celsius the RMC unit weight um, being 24 kilonewtons per meter cubed RMC static elastic modulus 10 GPA the RMC Poisson value um, being 0 0.2 and the RMC thermal expansion coefficient being 8 micron per degree Celsius the interface element penalty stiffness the KN and KT values being the normal and shear stiffness values 
were defined according to the interface element stiffness formulation provided in the MIDAS user manual. The images at the bottom of the slide uh, showing the input of the interface element uh, penalty stiffness and the equation used for the um, stiffness formulation. The loading conditions of the dam. The foundation was assumed to have a zero unit weight. The displacement of the foundation uh, due to its own weight is assumed to have fully occurred prior to construction and loading of the dam. In situ stresses in the foundation material near the surface are negligible compared to the stresses caused by the dam load. This is suitable as the analysis objective is to evaluate the dam structure and not specifically the foundation. Um, other analysis types, um, non-linear analyses of the foundation may be treated otherwise. Uh, the dam self-weight was applied as a gravitational body force and the hydrostatic loading um, for various loading conditions was applied in terms of the defined flood conditions. Table 4 defines the flood levels according to hydro, hyd hydrological studies. The um, dam foundation level at 740 um, meters above sea level and on the overspill crest at 767, the spillway crest at 765, the full supply flood level 765, the um, recommended design flood or regional design flood 765.31 and um, the safety evaluation flood 765.41. The further loading conditions, the silt load was applied as an active lateral earth pressure on the upstream face of the dam. The undrained uplift pressure on the dam base was assumed to have a linear load distribution uh, in accordance with UCASE, FERC and USBRC dam publications. Um, this as a result of no pressure relief drains being designed in the dam body. The two images in the slide on the left um, showing a um, gravity dam section with hydrostatic loading on the upstream face. The image on the right hand side showing a typical uplift load diagram for undrained loading conditions. Seismic loading of the dam um, was um, defined according to the pseudostatic approach assuming inertial loads and Vestergaard hydrodynamic loads as per local peak ground accelerations. This is a suitable assumption for small dams in low seismic regions and uh, it assumes the dam structure is rigid and that the water reservoir body is incompressible. Um, thermal long-term maximum temperature drop of 9 degrees was applied as a uniform temperature drop um, along the dam body and the thermal expansion coefficient of 8, eight micron per degree Celsius. The load diagram on the left of the screen showing typical seismic load um, conditions and on the right image is a, a screen grab taken of the Vestergaard equation for hydrodynamic pressure load applied to a dam um, simulating the loading due to um, the seismic response of a dam in relation to uh, its water reservoir body. Uh, in the setup of the analysis case in terms of a staged construction approach, the finite element model was built up, loaded and analyzed in four different stages, commencing with the foundation mesh body, followed by the dam and gravity load, the hydrostatic silt and temperature loads and finally the seismic loads um, also depending on the load combination um, temperature and seismic loads generally not applied um, in the same load case. Uh, after this the analysis solver was run using multiple CPU threads and GPU acceleration um, options in the MIDAS software. For chapter 9 of the presentation, analysis model walkthrough, 
I will open the Midas software and I will do a brief run through the geometry bodies of the dam and foundation, the material properties definitions, uh, the mesh bodies of the dam and foundation and a quick quality check of the elements um, having a look at the application of the boundary constraints, the defining of the load functions within the software, the um, loading applications on the finite element model as well as the analysis case set up in the software. Starting with the geometry solid um, bodies of the dam and foundation, in brown the three various foundation um, solids um, being made up of an inner portion, outer portion and lower portion, um, this allowing for the application of um, mesh seeding or mesh control um, to implement a proper mesh strategy um, ensuring a fine mesh um, of the foundation if it's in the vicinity of the dam and a coarse mesh of the outer extents of the foundation um, also clearly in grey the um, dam body solid geometry showing the various dam arches, buttresses and gravity portions on the flanks. Having a look at the material properties defined in the software, the RMC defined as a linear elastic material having an elastic modulus of 10 gigapascals, a Poisson ratio of 0.2 and the unit weight of um, 24 kilonewtons per meter cubed and a thermal coefficient of 8 microns per degrees Celsius. We will then deactivate the geometry and activate the mesh sets. Um, in this view we can see the mesh set of the dam and foundation. The foundation having a clear transition from a fine mesh in the vicinity of the dam to a coarse and very coarse mesh on the far outer extents of the foundation. This was created using the um, size control function in um, the software. If I deactivate the outer mesh bodies I can get a better view of the inner mesh body of the foundation and then if I deactivate the inner mesh um, foundation mesh we can take a close look at the mesh set of the dam body as well as the interface elements that were modeled at the base of the dam allowing us to extract um, stresses normal to and tangential to the base of the dam as well to as creating a tensile capacity um, at the interface between the dam and foundation. If I then deactivate the interface element mesh set, we can look at the dam body mesh set. A close up view showing a neat um, set of elements with a good aspect ratio. Um, good internal angles, um, smooth transition from fine elements at the crest to uh, more coarse elements at the base where the dam is slightly thicker. Using the Midas um, mesh quality check tools we can quickly evaluate the quality of the elements the tools showing very minimal um, ratio of poor elements um, showing a very good 
uh, miss it. Reactivating the full mesh set, um, then proceed to indicate the boundary conditions of the outer extents, the bottom of the foundation um, restraint against translation in all three directions x, y, and z. and the, um, the sides of the foundation constrained against translation in the X and Y in both the horizontal directions. The load functions were uh, defined um, in the general function tool values were inserted in terms of the elevation and the hydrostatic values for hydrostatic upstream for silt for uplift and various other um, loading diagrams and um, finally I will have a look at how the various loads were applied to the mesh set. Taking a close look at the um, dam body mesh set with a view of the FSL um, hydrostatic pressure applied on the upstream face of the dam. pressure defined um, or applied in terms of the pressure function defined earlier. And the uh, temperature drop load applied as a nodal temperature drop. on the dam mesh set. Finally taking a look at the analysis case um, for the construction stage the um, construction stage analysis um, tool, a uh, wizard tool, the various uh, mesh bodies or mesh sets and loadings are activated and deactivated um, according to the different steps. The first step showing activation of the foundation only, the second step showing activation of dam and gravity, the third step, a clear displacement, clearing of displacement step, and the fourth step, the hydrostatic pressure loads, and the fifth step, the seismic loads. For chapter 10 of the presentation, analysis results starting with a simple verification of the analysis results followed by a presentation of the displacement results of the dam an evaluation of the internal stress results of the dam and finally a look at the interface elements results um, produced at the base of the dam. It is important when performing any type of numerical modeling or analysis to always carry out a verification of the analysis results. This can be done by a simple summation of forces versus hand calculation. Uh, the summation of forces 
um, were extracted from the um, output of the finite element analysis and compared to simple hand calculations done in Excel, also known as a sanity check or a verification and validation exercise. Um, other verifications, the maximum displacement results are checked um, to ensure they are within reasonable range. This is a good check for units of the analysis inputs. Um, extremely large displacements of the dam may indicate um, input errors or um, model, as model assumption errors. Um, other common input errors that may be experienced, use of incorrect units um, or notation, specifically met metric and imperial units, um, skipping of decimals or zeros when inputting large values, as well as having too many zeros or too little zeros. The two images on the bottom showing a screenshot of the um, summation of forces output from MIDAS software, and on the right hand side a simple hand calculation of the hydrostatic load in the various X, Y and Z directions. The first analysis results that I normally look at are the dam displacements uh, for the Olifansput dam. The, da the dam displacement results showing a crest deflection no more than two millimeters. Um, the two um, dam displacement contour plots shown uh, the top one um, without the deformed shape and the bottom contour showing the deformed shape of the dam um, the asymmetrical displacement about the arch crown is due to the foundation slope resulting in a lower stiffness of the arch at the deeper foundation and a higher displacement um, towards the downstream side the horizontal stress results for load case 1 um, horizontal tensile prying stresses are indicated on the upstream face of the buttresses where the arch ties in with the buttress um, it was therefore um, um, required for the design of reinforcement steel on the upstream faces of the buttress where the um, arches tie in uh, the two images showing the horizontal stress results on the downstream face and the upstream faces. Uh, the vertical stress results for um, load case 1, vertical tensile stresses on the lower upstream face of the dam showing um, cantilever action. The vertical tensions um, on the mid downstream face show action of the cantilever propped by springs due to the support created by the arch stiffness. The two images um, showing the contours of the vertical stresses on the downstream face and the upstream face. The principal P3 stress results for load case 1. Um, these stress contours normally show your maximum compressions and the principal P3 stress contours show the arch action of the upper half of the arches for the Olifansburg dam. Um, this is clearly indicative in the two uh, stress contour plots provided in the slide on the downstream face and the upstream face. Uh, for the principal P stress results, uh, the two images showing the P3 principal stress vectors. These stress vectors show the load path of the compressions. The top portion again of the arches showing definite arching action um, transitioning um, from arching at the upper portion of the dam to cantilevering at the bottom portion of the dam. The interface element results extracted for load K6 um, show vertical stresses at the base of the dam with high tensions at the heel greater than the tensile capacity. Um, the inclusion of limited tensile stiffness nonlinear interface elements allows for the release of high tensions by way of plastic deformation and redistribution of stresses in the dam body. 
the two images below the top image showing vertical stress results at the base of the dam without interface elements um, showing m marginally high tensions above 1 MPA and the image at the bottom showing vertical stress results uh, with interface elements uh, where there's a clear stress redistribution and re redistribution and release of the high tension stresses. A close-up view of the dam base vertical stresses showing the um, stress redistribution due to low tensile capacity of the interface elements. Uh, further analysis output plots um, indicate the nonlinear um, deflection or uh, stress redistribution in the dam, um, clearly showing the peeling away of the heel of the dam from the foundation. This is due to the release of the computed tensile stresses exceeding the allowable tensile strength at the dam foundation interface. The stress contour at the top um, showing high tensions um, immediately at the heel of the dam and the image at the bottom showing the actual peeling away of the mesh set and um, uh, the alleviation of the high tensions. The analysis results summary, um, the results summary for the various loading cases are shown in the table below. Um, high tensile stresses indicated in red were re-evaluated using elastoplastic interface elements after which they were reduced to below 0.6 MPA. A bilinear smeared crack and Drucker Prague and nonlinear analysis approaches were also performed to validate the stress redistribution um, for which the results um, will not be covered in this due to um, lack of time. Uh, the table just showing the all the analysis output results for load cases 1 to 6 um, indicating the odd stresses, cantilever stresses, P1s which are generally tensile stresses, P3s, base shear stresses as well as P crest displacements. Um, positive stresses um, um, indicating tensions and negative stresses indicating compressions. Chapter 11 of the presentation. In closing, I would summarize that the case study webinar comprised of an analysis of an RMC arch buttress dam on a rock mass foundation, the 3D characteristics of such a dam foundation require a comprehensive and accurate finite element analysis. Non-linear analyses uh, were carried out to further evaluate marginal um, allowable strength exceedances. Um, this was performed using the MIDAS FEA NX software. Um, the software has powerful modeling capabilities. The MIDA software has advanced 3D automashing algorithm which enables for the high quality discretization using hybrid elements. The MIDA software has a user friendly GUI. The MIDA software has easy interaction between other software such as CAD and Excel for modeling, pre-processing and post-processing. The MIDA software has an efficient analysis solver tool with multi-threading and GPU acceleration capability for efficiently solving large analysis models. Uh, in the final slide, a list of references um, for those interested in doing further research into the um, analysis and design of um, RMC arch buttress dams. And that concludes my presentation. Um, I believe we will now be um, open for um, any questions from the audience.